Today we are here at Clyde Pillings Reptiland, one of my favorite places to go to for interviews. So, let's go see what they have going on. Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here with Anna. Hello. Hello. What do we have here? Uh, this is one of our star tortoises. So this guy is a little male right here. Uh, females are quite a bit bigger than this. They can get to be about twice the size. But this is a full-grown adult male. Pretty small species of tortoise. How does the shell help them in the wild? Uh, this shell helps them in the wild. You can see how high and domed this is compared to something like an aquatic turtle that has a very flat, low shell. Uh, tortoises typically have very high dome shells to help diffuse the amount of heat that's hitting them from the sun. If they had a flat shell like a turtle, they would tend to overheat. So this helps to diffuse that heat. I saw like when Pokemon had to put all his legs in front of him, his head was completely inside. Yeah, he can completely pull in to defend himself. You can see when I'm holding him, he'll kind of stick out a little bit. But if he starts to feel a little bit threatened, if I start to touch him a little, of course now he doesn't want to do it much. But he can completely pull that little face in. You've got that nice, thick, rough scales on the front of his feet. He'll tuck that all in front of his face. He'll tuck his back legs up. And this is something that not many predators can kind of figure out a way to get around. What do these tortoises eat in the wild? These animals are completely herbivorous, so what they're going to be eating is plant material, grasses, leaves, uh, fruits, roots, whatever he manages to come across he's going to eat. Uh, many tortoises do eat a little bit of extra protein. Uh, he might eat a snail or an insect that he finds or even chew on a little bit of a dead animal, uh, but by far this animal is vegetarian. So do you also, if they're mostly um, herbivorous, do you also feed them? plants and stuff like that. Yeah, we give them uh, a fresh diet every day. These animals will get freshly cut grass. They love dandelion greens uh, and flowers and things like that as well. Uh, and then they also get the occasional diet that's going to have fruits and vegetables, uh, as well as a commercially produced diet called tortoise chow, kind of like dog food for tortoises, has everything that they need in it, and gives them a bit of a vitamin boost. Well, let's move on to the next size of tortoise we have here. All right. So now we're here with another tortoise. So let's see this. Uh, these are our yellow-footed tortoises, also called uh, forest tortoises. How big do these tortoises get? This is a full-grown adult female, and in this species, the males are about the same size. Uh, you can tell the males from the females typically by looking at the bottom of the shell. So you can see the bottom of her shell is kind of a flat surface. If I had a male right here, it would really curve inward. And that's one easy way to tell a male from a female when looking at these animals. Or the star tortoise, like you said, they put their legs in. That's kind of what he's doing now. Exactly. That's what she's better. doing, you know, really sucking herself in, trying to protect herself. And like I said, you know, down in the areas where these animals live, uh, South and Central America, not a lot of predators can figure out how to get through that. Something like a jaguar is going to come along, probably roll it around, chew on it a little bit, but won't actually be able to get in and hurt that animal. Um, one of the few animals that can figure out how to get around that shell is humans. Uh, and down in the areas where these animals live, they are hunted and taken by people. They'll often keep them in pins uh, near their homes. And if they are going out hunting and don't manage to capture anything for food that day, they can always come home and have one of these uh, ready available food source to go out in the backyard and have turtle soup for dinner. And that's, of course, not very good because <laughs> most turtle and tortoise species are in a lot of danger. Yeah, there are a lot of these animals that are endangered, uh, that are in a lot of trouble. Because of overcollection is one of the biggest threats to turtles and tortoises. Uh, in many countries, um, particularly in places like Asia, People go out and they're taking uh, aquatic turtles out of the wild to eat, and we're eating these animals to death. And over there we can see another tortoise all walking around in the bushes. Yeah, they all love to hide in these bushes. Uh, they've got a bunch of hiding spots. They'll seek shady spots if it gets a little bit too warm for them. They'll come out into the sun when they want to warm up. Uh, in our little bushes, they'll often dig out spots and create little mud wallows. Uh, tortoises love to kind of sit and wallow in mud when they're able to. It's pretty hot out today, so that's probably exactly what you're doing. Yeah, you can see a lot of them. Uh, I brought her out from the shade, so she was enjoying a little bit of the shade. Um, and you being cold-blooded animals, that's how they thermoregulate. That's how they control their body temperature. So now that she's out, she'll start to warm up a little bit. But if she starts to feel a little bit too warm, she'll go find some shade again. Uh, if she sits in the shade too long, gets a little bit too cool, she'll just come right back out. That's how they control their body temperature compared to us. Thermoregulation. Exactly. 
uh, we're controlling our body temperatures right now by sweating. So that's what we do, um, and then we insulate our bodies to keep warm in cooler temperatures. Well, thank you for telling us about this piece of the tortoise, and let's go to the next one. All right. And here we are with size number three of the tortoises. So, what species is this? So these are Galapagos tortoises. Uh, the first tortoise we looked at is what I would consider a very small species. The yellow-footed tortoises are what I would call medium species. This is a truly giant species of tortoise. The Galapagos tortoises are considered to be the world's largest living species of tortoise. Uh, and these are not fully grown animals. They're kind of the human equivalent of being teenagers. Their actual age is in their 20s, but they are not nearly fully grown yet. How old do these tortoises get? They can get to be at least 150, potentially older than that. Uh, these are exceptionally long-lived animals. We often don't have a real good idea of their exact extreme age range because we haven't even known about them long enough to take a large collection of them and see how long they can live. Uh, you know, if you start off with one of these as a pet and you're a scientist with this brand new hatchling, you're going to be dead and there's a chance that the grad student you have is going to be dead before you finish a study on how long these animals can live. So with the name Galap Galapagos tortoise, with you I uh, would assume that you'll find them on the Galapagos Islands. Yep, that is the only place that you'll find these animals. Uh, and there are many different subspecies that are endemic to each island, with each island having slightly different tortoises, all members of the same species, but with these really interesting, unique differences between the subspecies. Um, unfortunately, being island animals, they were really susceptible when Europeans first discovered these islands and brought things like rats and pigs that were destroying the, the eggs of these animals, and the Europeans were killing them and eating them for food. Uh, many of these subspecies have gone extinct. Um, not long ago, Lonesome George, the last of the Pinta Island subspecies of tortoises, went extinct, and, and that was unfortunately the last one of those animals around. Uh, island species are a really good example of why we need zoos around to have these animals in captivity with uh, lifeboat populations. We're acting as a lifeboat for these species. If something were to happen to a particular subspecies, we still have some of these animals, we have genetic representations that we can then release back into the wild to bring these animals back from extinction, which we've done with several species. If any species of animals are extinct in the wild, we have these um, ones in captivity to go back there and hopefully repopulate the area and make it all hopefully all better again. Exactly. That's like our Panamanian golden frogs that we have here. They're completely extinct in the wild, but we have captive populations in zoos. And there are several other species of frogs and toads that have gone extinct in the wild, and we've been able to take captive animals, put them back out into the wild, and we've brought these animals back from extinction. Uh, and it's really important for us to be able to do this, since unfortunately often humans are the initial cause of the extinction of that animal. And it must feel really good to um, help do that. Like, you yeah, know, I'm I mean, watching over these animals and then they're going back to the wild and they're completely gone out there and now they're having a sustainable population. Like, to, if I did that, that would make me feel amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's such an amazing feeling. Species. Like, yeah, we brought this species back. It was completely gone. It was listed as extinct. And now we can take it off that extinction list. We can pull that one animal back from extinction uh, when so many others have been permanently lost. So let's hope these guys don't go extinct in the wild or extinct at all. And let's move on to the next species of tortoise. Excellent. And here we are with our final size of tortoises. And this is Al and Henry. So can you tell us about these guys? So these are our Aldabra tortoises. Uh, along with the Galapagos tortoises, these are some of the largest tortoises on the planet. These animals are full grown, so I talked about how our Galapagos tortoises are still quite young individuals, only in their 20s, and still have quite a bit of growing to do. These guys are both fully grown adult males in their 50s. So, how long have you had these guys? Um, Al we've had since shortly after he was hatched. Um, I believe they got him when he was about four or five years old. Um, Henry was an adult when we got him. We have not had him quite as long. We don't know his exact age, uh, just because they didn't know his exact age, the zoo that we got him from. Uh, but we do know that uh, Henry, or Al, is actually turning 50 this year. So his birthday is, I think, in about a month. 
So we may have to come down for that. Yeah, we plan on having a whole party for him. We're going to make him a tortoise-friendly cake out of tortoise chow and carrots and fruits and vegetables. Uh, and I'm sure that he will enjoy that. And if they find it tastes good, they'll probably enjoy it. Oh yeah, they see color really well, so we'll probably put a lot of brightly colored fruits and vegetables on it. Uh, they really love anything that's colored red. Uh, so watermelon, strawberries, apples, those are all favorites for these animals. Yeah. Anyway, you say that, I'm getting kind of hungry, so we might have to stop by and get lunch after this. Sounds like a good idea. So, what other tissues do we have? What do they use these ad tissues for? Those long necks just help them to reach a variety of different food sources. Uh, so being such a big, heavy animal, they can't really climb up to get things. But if they have a nice long neck, they can reach that neck up to grab leaves and flowers out of trees. Uh, so it just helps them to get their food sources. So this is the final side of the tours we have here today. Thank you for telling us all about the four different species. No problem. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and come back next week for some more animal education.